Okay, we have an interesting integral here today. We've got the integral from zero to pi over four, tan to the 2024x dx. Okay, the way this one came about is in a recent video, I derived the power reduction formula for the integral of tan to the nx, where all it does is it just reduces the power. So if you start with an integral of tan to the nx, all we're doing is reducing the power by two over here with this value popping out. So after I did this one, I was thinking, what are the interesting applications of this? Because like if this right here were an indefinite integral, you wouldn't want to use the formula 1,012 times or whatever. And that goes for even if it was like 10 to the 12 or something, like how many times do you want to do this? But I think for this one, it actually works out pretty nice and helps that we've got nice bounds on it too. So what we can do is we can define this as I to the 2024 on this. And we can use the formula and start trying to get a few values. So like, for I2024, if we plug in a 2024 here for this first part, just to reduce it, we're gonna have n minus one tan to the 2023 x over 2023. And we need to evaluate that from zero to pi over four. And then for the second part, let's just use the notation. We're gonna, we're gonna get another integral back, but we'll abbreviate it and we'll write it as I to the 2022 here. Well, then we can go ahead and evaluate this. First, tan at pi over four is just one. 1 to the 2023 is just 1. So this first piece is just going to be 1 over 2023. You plug a 0 in, tan at 0 is just 0. So that part of it goes away. And then we just get back this I 2022. Now let's just repeat this again on I to the 2022 and see what happens. We use our n minus 1. So we're going to end up with, I'm not going to go through the whole exercise of doing this, because we can see no matter what we do, the numerator is going to become 1. We get our n minus 1 in the numerator, so this becomes 2021. And then we're going to have minus n minus 2, so now we're going to have i2020. And so it doesn't take too many of these to see the pattern. We can do just one more, and then this is going to become 1 over 2019 minus i sub 2018. So we kind of keep going using the recursive formula and getting it all the way down to i sub 0. But what's going to happen is when you plug this in here, we'll start plugging in. This becomes minus 1 over 2021. 20, but then when you plug this one back in, you're going to have the minus here, and the minus here becomes a plus, and now this is a 1 over, a positive 1 over 2019. And this pattern is just going to continue like this, all the way down basically to your i sub 0 value. One thing you need to be careful about when you do this is just noticing the sign, because you're not going to keep track of it all the way down to 1. But notice for the values that are divisible by 4, you get a positive sign out front like on this one and then on this one and then for the ones that are just divisible by two but not by four those all have a minus sign like this one here so then all we need to do to get some kind of solution for this is then let's just calculate i sub zero and see what that is well that's pretty easy just using if we look at what we have here i sub zero is going to be the integral from zero to pi over four tan to the zero of x dx but tan to the zero is just one. So all we need to do is integrate one. Here we get x from zero to pi over four, and that's just gonna be pi over four. So let's just plug pi over four back into what we found here. And so for my solution to this, we just get this whole long mess right here. But the question is, can we do a little bit better? Is there a way to, is there a way to get some numeric value for this without pulling out the calculator and calculating 2,000 terms or 1,000 terms or whatever. Well, what I thought we could do on this is kind of look more closely at this series, but I just want to reverse it because it's kind of harder to deal with the large numbers because we definitely have this nice pattern of just all odd numbers in the denominator. So what we're really looking at is minus 1 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7, and this is going to go all the way. Our last value is going to be this 1 over 2023. 20, and then, of course, I can factor a minus sign out of this if we want. And so then we get something maybe a little nicer and we can write it like this. And then I did something like this before. The trouble with it is, and the but the trouble is if we want to use an infinite series on this, we can't quite do it because it's not infinite. It's just going to a large number. But if you think about it, this like the decimal value of this is going to be pretty small. So if we use an infinite series on this as an estimate, it's going to be pretty close because I mean, what is that? That's like 0.0, that's, that's just gonna be, like it's definitely not gonna be exact, but the values at the end here are going off to zero. So we should be pretty good 
doing a series estimation for this. Well, what I can use on this is the power series for arctan of x. When you expand this out, what you get is x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over 5 minus x to the 7 over 7, continuing on to forever. And we've got that pattern here where we've got these odd, where we have odd integers in the denominator. And then what you'll notice is if you just plug, just plug a 1 in here into this formula, if you just take 1 and plug it in here for x, what's going to happen? Our power series for arctan at 1 is just going to be now 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth etc exactly what we have right here except this one's going to infinity one thing to be aware of when you do this is the convergence but one happens to be okay it's starting from a geometric series where normally one is not okay when you do a geometric series but when you manipulate a geometric series to get to your power series you check the endpoints and it works that one is okay minus one is okay but anything outside of that is going to diverge so then what we can do here for our estimate it's just looking at all this stuff over here to the right. Our value that we're gonna use as an estimate for this is just gonna be minus arctan at one. So then we just need to take that and plug it back in here for our solution. So let's just reorder it and kind of get rid of this. So for our solution, we're gonna have pi over four minus, but arctan at one is also gonna be pi over four. So for, so let me show that this is an estimate because it's not gonna be exact. But for our solution to this, we get approximately zero. And one thing I thought was really interesting with this is it's very easy to see it looking at a graph. What you could do is on Desmos, you kind of create the slider, even though it only goes up to an exponent of 10. So like on the exponent, it's just going to be, you could start from 10 of 1, 10 squared, 10 cubed. And going from, even just going from 10 to 10 to the 10th, you see how we're losing area and we're getting closer and closer to zero. Of course, you start putting in larger exponents, you get all the way up to 2024. You can barely even see that there's an area. It just starts very clearly. You can start seeing the curve is going to be going towards zero. Anyway, so there you have it. Thought it was an interesting problem. Pretty good use of the recursion formula. I'm not sure maybe there is better ways, but this is one way that we can actually make use of the recursion formula where it's not super tedious and we don't have to just like use it a thousand times. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.